And now to officially start the meeting, if you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to our flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I declare this meeting of the Claremont County Board of Commissioners for November the 13th duly open. Thanks for coming this morning and we will move right to our regular agenda before we get started. I would uh, ask for a motion to excuse uh, Commissioner Humphrey this morning from the session. Um, he is vacationing with his family and uh, is uh, out of the country at the moment. So we miss him and, and I would ask that he would be uh, excused from the proceedings today. So I move to excuse him. A second. <clears throat> it's been moved and we've received a second. Roll call, Judy. Mr. Painter. Yes. Corcoran? Yes. Mr. Humphrey, if you're watching in, uh, in Panama, you have duly been excused. <laughs> have a good time with your family. And we'll move right to approval of the regular session minutes for November the 6th, 2019. We've had those minutes and we've had them graciously prepared for us by the staff, had an opportunity to review and to ask for any questions or clarifications. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes of 11 6 2019? I'll make the motion. I'll second that motion. Roll call, Judy. Corcoran? Yes. Mr. Painter? Yes. And we'll move to public participation, item number C. If there's anyone here from the public like participate in this, this meeting this morning, you are more than welcome to do so. All you have to do is raise your hand, be called on by the president, and I will gladly give you the podium. You'll have five minutes. At this time, the board does not uh, enter into debate or discussion. And uh, <clears throat> is there anyone that would like to participate? Sir, if you would come to the podium, state your name and your address. Good morning, my name is Rick Barron, 3803 Gray Birch Drive, Amelia, Ohio. We are a community of pet lovers. I challenge you to find five people that you know whose first BFF had two legs instead of four. Most families in this community start by adopting a four-legged family member before graduating on to a two-legged family member. But life happens and people have to relinquish those animals. They try friends and family, everyone they can to try to rehome their furry family member. And when all else fails, they pack everybody into the car and they head down that road behind the shelter or behind the sheriff's department, hoping that they're not telling themselves, their kids or their grandkids a lie when they say, honey, this organization will take great care of Fido for us. They're gonna find him a new home. Unfortunately, the county had a dirty little secret up until a few years ago. And that dirty little secret was that 65% of the dogs and 90% of the cats that went through the front door went out the back door in body bags. Not because the organization didn't want to save them. It was underfunded and did not know what to do to save them. In 2012, I walked into the commissioner's office and they were working on the contract for the second year extension for the current organization. And I asked if they were open to some new ideas for the contract, and they said yes. Due to your leadership, the board's leadership, in a residence of Claremont County in the spring could now enjoy hours during the week where people who worked and family who had school-aged children could now adopt animals. In addition, qualified rescues could pull animals off of the euthanasia list. Unfortunately, the provider's attorney decided there was some liability there and threw up some roadblocks. Again, the Board of County Commissioners came to the rescue and created what they called their canine designee. The provider organization would take the animals back from the provider, the, the board would take the animals back from the provider and make them available to this one rescue who would save their lives. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of animals were saved because of your leadership. 
As that contract came to a close, I asked a simple question, what's the process to bid on the contract? And they said there was not one. They're not required under Ohio Revised Code to bid out the shelter contract. Once again, the Board of County Commissioners stepped up and saw value to the residents of the county by bidding out the shelter contract, selecting a new organization that could provide new leadership, new ideas, new programs to save more animals. As that contract came to a close, they were approached by the leadership for the now Claremont Animal Care Humane Society, who painted a vision of what we all believe is happening back behind the Sheriff's Department. That that building is a sanctuary for the animals that we can no longer keep in our homes. That it's a safe haven. That they will find new forever homes for these pets. And the board stepped up again and made a choice to partner with a new organization to allow that to happen. Multiple decisions over the years, all showing your leadership and vision. But now we sit at a crossroads where the partner is asking for fair funding. I asked the board to go back in their memory and think of a service provider organization who has raised 150% of the county's contribution in their first year of operation. We have the city's best animal leader leading this organization, supported by national organizations who have pulled together some of the absolute best talent that's available in the country, not just our community to help make good on what we all know and believe. We are a community of pet lovers. And I ask the Board of County Commissioners to go back and find those creative solutions to work with their partner on helping us no longer have to lie to our children and grandchildren as we go down that lonely road to drop off those animals saying, Yes, honey, they are going to find Fido a new forever home. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else during public participation? Yes, ma'am. If you'd go to the podium and tell us your name and your address. Uh, sure. Thank you. Oh, thank okay. you. First, I ask you to forgive my voice. I've been fighting a cold and losing for the last 10 days. So, uh, My name is Carol Sanger, and I am not a resident of Claremont County, but I do have roots in Claremont County that go way back. My grandfather and my uncle were builders, and back in the 50s and 60s, they created a number of subdivisions in the Milford and Loveland area and eventually out toward Goshen. My father opened a restaurant in downtown Milford in uh, the late 1950s. It's where 20 Bricks is now. My parents then moved to Florida and moved back in the 1970s, the early 70s, and they moved to Goshen. In each case, what was rural then is not so now. Instead of cornfields in Goshen, there are homes with six figures, and those homes have pets. Much has changed in Claremont County. Uh, it's a far different place today than it was back then. But what seems not to have changed, in large part, is an attitude toward animals. The rural mentality of 50 years ago, I think, is still reflected in how this county approaches, regards, and funds its obligations for animal services in how it sees its responsibilities. Every county in Ohio has the same basic minimum requirements for how its homeless animals must be treated. Yet very few, if any, of Ohio's urban, suburban, and exurban counties have chosen to stop there and not go any further. 
It's disturbing to me and to so many to see that Claremont seems satisfied to look at that low bar, consider it a stop sign, and turn back and go no further. Claremont seems willing to return to the days when stray dogs were brought into the shelter and in a mere three days, three days, were gassed, suffocated, or given lethal injections, and then carried out in trash bags with the rest of the garbage. That happened. That was the reputation that for many, many years Claremont County had. But I'm not here today to talk about numbers. I know you've had enough of that. What I am here to talk about is the incredible opportunity that is before you. A get out of jail free card, if you will. A way to redress the failures of the past rather than repeat them. A way forward that would benefit you, your constituents, and your long-term growth plans for this county and the animals that have come to share our homes and our hearts in ways that were never anticipated 30, 40, 50 years ago. You have before you in Claremont Animal Care Humane Society a unique group of individuals with levels of professionalism, experience, resources, connections, and commitment never before seen here. And you have two options. You can look for someone willing to run your shelter in ways most other counties have long abandoned and found repugnant and un unacceptable. And you can deal with the publicity, the media scrutiny, and the public outcry that I can promise you will result from that choice. Or you can decide that lemonade is far better than any lemons you've encountered and take advantage of what's landed in your lap a group of individuals who have already accomplished significant goals and overcome far more difficult odds than what they face now. Speaking for myself, I chaired the UCAN board and was responsible for securing funding for UCAN when it opened the region's first nonprofit spay-neuter clinic for cats and dogs in 2007. I then chaired the first board of Pets in Need of Greater Cincinnati and helped open the region's first pet wellness clinic for low-income pet owners in 2011. I am the immediate past chair and a current board member of the League for Animal Welfare. And last year I ran its successful capital campaign, raising $1.3 million to open a permanent veterinary clinic on its Taylor Road campus. And I'm on the advisory board for Claremont Animal Care. And I've watched in amazement, actually, what has been accomplished there, far beyond anything you expected or for which you're paying. These are people who raised and personally donated more than $500,000 to animal care in Claremont County in the last year alone. This is a group that demonstrated its commitment, its dedication, and most importantly, its ability to deliver on promises. And what is being promised in return for fair funding? That these individuals, this group, their considerable resources and connections throughout this community, the state and the country, We'll work with you to make a case to the voters of Claremont County for adequate shelter funding, for animal care programs to benefit the people and pets of this county, be that eventually a bond issue, a tax levy, or any other means that is open to local government for raising necessary funding. We will work to make that case, to take that campaign to the people and to bring it across the finish line. I would suggest to you in closing that there is no going back, but there is a tremendous opportunity to move forward. And it's an opportunity you will never have again. And in my opinion, you would be foolish not to take it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in public participation? Yes, ma'am. <coughs> Good 
Good morning, commissioners. Thanks for allowing me to speak. Uh, my name is Faith Wright. I am the Animal Shelter Management Advisor for American Pets Alive. I'm based out of Austin, Texas, which is the largest no-kill uh, city in uh, the nation. I am an animal services professional, and I have been working in this field for over a decade. My services are sought out nationwide to work with shelters across the United States to help create and enhance shelter programs with the goal of reaching and sustaining no-kill. No-kill for us is the belief and practice that every pet who enters a shelter should receive urgent individualized treatment and care with the goal of a live outcome. I'm here today to speak to you on behalf of the Claremont Animal Care Humane Society. I urge you to consider the funding request and to renew the contract with the Claremont Animal Care. Claremont Animal Care Humane Society has become a nationally recognized success story. They are rising stars in our industry and any municipality would be very lucky to have such a professional, qualified and committed organization as their humane uh, society partner. Claremont County uh, Animal Sh uh, Care, so, uh, sorry, Claremont Animal Care currently has a live release rate of 96% because they are working very diligently to minimize the euthanasia rate of dogs. This is very important to note because prior to them running the shelter, there were fewer animal lives saved. Your community has embraced this positive change of the county shelter's operations. To not allow these positive changes to continue would be devastating to the shelter employees who are caring for these animals, as well as for the public who have come to expect that homeless animals will be saved in your community. The community's support is undeniable. Look at the outpouring of calls and emails that you yourselves have received. The commentary on social media, the community members speaking up and attending these meetings, as well as the petition that has almost 15,000 signatures on it uh, in just five days on a petition to keep the Claremont County Animal Shelter's no-kill status. In March 2019, the state of Ohio named shelter pets as the official pet of the state of Ohio. There is no doubt that Ohio Ohioans care about their pets. Under the current contract, the shelter is required to house, care for, and feed, as well as perform adoption and disposal of dogs that have been seized and dogs that have surrendered that can be reasonably housed. The 2020 RFP changes the contractual obligations to animals, not just dogs, that can be reasonably housed. Cutting operation hours will not allow the shelter to maintain the current life-saving practices. The Association of uh, Veterinarians provides guidelines for standards of care in the animal shelters that outline best care practices and the minimum standard for animal shelters. As this RFP is written right now, by reducing the hours to 37 and a half hours per week, the national standard of minimum best practices for animal sheltering cannot be met. Claremont Animal Care operates much more than the current contracted amount calls for, approximately 70 hours a week. These additional hours are necessary to keep animals healthy, alive, and to find them forever homes. Section 5 of your current contract with Claremont Animal Care calls for assurance that the Humane Society is fulfilling the duties that are required of the board. Pursuant to ORC 955, the dogs are treated, treated humanely. Unclaimed and unadoptable dogs are disposed of humanely and respectfully and the dog shelter is operated in a manner to minimize the euthanasia rate of dogs and the spread of dog disease. The current budget paid for by the county does not promote the very life-saving efforts that are required under this section of your current contract, as well as under the scope of work under the RFP. I've read the Ohio County Commissioner's Handbook, Chapter 127, as well as the Ohio Revised Handbook, Chapter 955. I'm sorry, Ohio Revised Code, Chapter 955. The ultimate responsibility for properly administering those Ohio dog lives for which, county, for which county government is responsible for rests with you, the Board of Commission, County Commissioners. It is clear that the responsibility for delivering these services to your constituent is yours and yours alone. Your community wants and expects their shelter pets to be saved. Claremont Animal Care contracts with you to provide these <coughs> services on your behalf and in exchange, you agree to provide the funding for these services. In order for life-saving operations to continue, Claremont Animal Care needs a commitment to pay the full cost of services you have contracted for. 
The funding amount that Claremont Animal Care is asking for is just enough to provide the minimum care for the dogs they care for under your contract. I urge you to increase the funding for the care of the county's dogs. Claremont Animal Care will continue to save more than just the dogs from your community at no additional charge to the county. Your community has come to expect that the animals will end up in your county, that the animals end up in your county shelter will be treated as if their lives matter as much as our pets do to us at home. Please help the shelter to maintain the life-saving work they do and help empower them to continue to be national leaders in animal sheltering. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Let us know who you are and where you live. Uh, <coughs> my name is Amanda Taylor, and I currently live in Loveland, but I grew up in uh, Claremont County. Um, I am a registered veterinary technician, a veterinary technician specialist in emergency and critical care. I'm also the medical director for the Claremont County hum Claremont Animal Care Humane Society. I grew up in Claremont County and I care deeply about the animals and people who live here. Our organization is making huge strides in the advancement of animal care in our shelter here in Claremont County. The Claremont County Shelter has never seen such a driven, forward-thinking group of people who have the knowledge, resources, and ability to initiate real change, and they may never again. Section 5 of our current contract calls for insurance that the society is fulfilling the duties that are required of the board pursuant to ORC 955 that the dogs are treated humanely, that unclaimed and unadoptable dogs are disposed of humanely and respectfully, and that the dog shelter is operated in a manner to minimize the euthanasia rate of dogs and the spread of diseases. It should also be noted, it is important to note that these are not only diseases that are communicable within the canine population, but also zoonotic diseases, meaning diseases with the potential to spread from dogs to humans. The minute an animal walks into our doors and is vaccinated, dewormed, treated for external, external parasites, evaluated for injuries or other health concerns, anything abnormal is documented and medical staff is alerted. Medical staff will then create and carry out a treatment plan specific to the individual animal, every single animal. Animals come into the shelter in many different states of health. Some are perfectly healthy, but many require some form of medical intervention. Animals with injuries who got away from their owners, strays, seized animals from abuse or neglectful situations. The veterinary care that we are currently providing for, the, for these animals in Claremont County is, in my opinion, the best it has <coughs> ever seen. What will happen to these animals without any form of medical whatsoever? Will they be allowed to sit suffering for three days? Will, be, will they be euthanized immediately? I hate to think that injured animals would come to either of these fates here in Claremont County. Animals get out, accidents happen, we are their safety net. The shelter has to be run responsibly, not only for the animals, but also for the residents of Claremont County who love them like family. Many of these responsibilities come down to medical care and management for all parties involved. We cannot ignore that medical staff is an essential piece to running our shelter. In doing so, we would be doing a disservice to this community, its people, and its animals. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, and do you want to say your name? Okay. This is Riley, and she wrote a letter. Um, you, you don't, okay, she's going to get too nervous to read it, so I'm going to read it for her. Um, hi, it's me. I thought you would never get to see me in person, but here I am. Here are a few, few things about me. One, I am in the fifth grade. Two, I am 10 years old. Lastly, I basically work at the shelter when I do not go into school. Now to the point. Do you think this is fair? Do you think that we want to fight? Don't you miss those days when we were not fighting? The last and most probable reasonable question is why? If you think that we will be a kill shelter, that is where you are wrong. We have never just given a dog three days in the end. What would you think if that's how it was for you? We are a great team here at Claremont Animal Care Humane Society. Claremont Animal Care Humane Society is a no-kill helping animal shelter. Our team can be put to any task, and you can rely, rely on them any day of the week, and you should not think otherwise. We will stick up for each other. We really are a hardworking, great community. Isn't that what you need? We are committed to our future, and yes, the future that we are trying to change by saving the shelter. You say that you give us enough money, 
But there are just so many animals that show up at the shelter wishing to get their forever homes, and we need the money to give that to them. Thank you. Anyone else? <clears throat> Seeing none, I'll close the public participation. Thank you. Thank you for your comments this morning. Appreciate that. <clears throat> I'll move to item number D, the consent agenda. <coughs> consent agenda has been approved, has been prepared for the board, and I know that the board members have had time to review it. Are there any items, uh, Commissioner Corcoran, that you would like removed from the consent agenda? Are we removing? I will. Uh, <coughs> yes, I'd like to remove item number item number six, but only the board of commissioners. Um, Christine Hutchinson, employee thirty nine ninety eight, <coughs> and move to the uh, non consent agenda. I make that motion to move it. Okay. <coughs> Second. Roll call, Judy. Corcoran. Yes. Mr. Painter. Yes. That was just to remove the item off, and now I would I would make a motion to approve the consent agenda as prepared and with the removal of Christine Hutchinson. I'll make that motion. And I'll second that. Roll call, Judy. Mrs. Corcoran? Yes. Mr. Painter? Yes. <clears throat> and I'll move to item number E to the non-consent agenda. Mr. And that Mr. item would be the first one to be taken. When that personnel action first. I, I, I do. Okay. The one for Christine Hutchinson. Okay. Christine, come in here a minute. Yes, come on in, Christine. <laughs> to 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 the people to the people who are here in attendance today, there are many people that that serve this board and, and make uh, the things that you see happen out here that happen just like clockwork and and um, uh, go on every day here and Christine is one of those people um, I made a motion to remove your personnel action from the board this morning. And the reason for that wasn't to embarrass you. It was just to say thanks. You know, Christine has notified us that uh, she'll be leaving our employee in January, I believe, the 24th. And I just wanted to let you know that this board is uh, very, very uh, thankful for your service here to Claremont County and that we will miss you. And with that, I will make a motion to accept Christine Hutchinson's termination and resignation effective 124, 2020. Request Do I have a second? Me? I will <laughs> second that motion. Thank you, Christine. For Thanks, all Christine. Vote. Roll call, Judy. Painter. Yes. Corcoran. Yes. And I'll move to item number seven of the non-consent agenda. Board of County Commissioners recommendation that the Board of County Commissioners adopt resolution number 176-19, resolving to approve payment in vendors in the total amount of $2,940,374.45 as set forth in the BCC approval invoice reports for the checks dated November the 13th, 2019 in the BCC directed prepaid invoice reports presented by the county auditor on 11-12-2019 and further authorizing the county auditor to issue warrants for the same pursuant to section 319.16 of the Ohio Revised Code. Do I have a motion to pay the bills? I'll make the motion. And I'll second that motion. Roll call, Judy. Corcoran. Yes. Mr. Painter. Yes. Item number eight, Department of Job and Family Services. Tim Dick, morning. Good morning, Commissioner. Item number eight is recommendation of Thomas J. Eigel, County Administrator, to approve the revised Addendum A, award information, allocation table, and the addition of Addendum D, supplemental funding amendment, to the Early Intervention Service Coordination Grant Agreement by and between the Claremont County Department of Job and Family Services, acting in its role as administrative agent for the Claremont County Family and Children First and the Ohio Department of Developmental Disabilities, Office of Grant Management, located in Columbus, Ohio, previously ratified by the Board of County Commissioners on August 7, 2019, for the provision of funding for early intervention service coordination services for the Claremont County families with children from birth through age two with developmental delays. This is to allow for the receipt of additional funding for the early intervention service coordination program in the amount of $85,145, increasing Claremont County's allocation to a total of $496,546 with no local cash match required, therefore, 
effective for the period of July 1st, 2019 through June 30th, 2020, and further to authorize Tim Dick, Director of the Department of Job and Family Services, Administrative Agent for Claremont County Family and Children First to execute said Addendum D, Supplemental Funding Amendment to the Early Intervention Service Coordination Grant Agreement, therefore, and all other terms and conditions of the Early Intervention Service Coordination Grant Agreement to remain in full force and effect. We've heard the reading of item number eight and recommendation <coughs> of Tom Michael and, and Mr. Dick here for intervention, early intervention service coordination grant agreements. Uh, do I have a motion for approval? I make the motion. It's been moved and I'll second that. Any further <coughs> conversation or discussion? Roll call, Judy. Mrs. Corcoran. Yes. Mr. Daniel. Yes. Item number nine. Item number nine minutes nine is a recommendation of Thomas J. Igel, County Administrator, to complete the biennial review of the Claremont County Prevention, Retentions, and Contingency Plan <coughs> process required by Chapter 5108 of the Ohio Revised Code and to approve an amended Claremont County Prevention, Retentions, and Contingency Plan previously ratified by the Board of County Commissioners on August 15, 1997 and subsequently amended 32 times starting back in February of 98 <laughs> to include Minor modifications of the Claremont County PRC plan as outlined therein, the addition of the Kinship Caregiver Program, and an update to the monthly federal poverty guideline measure attached thereto as Appendix A, which becomes effective January 11th, 2019, and to further authorize Timothy Dick, Director of the Department of Job and Family Services, to execute the Claremont County Prevention, Retention, and Contingency Plan as amended, therefore, with said modifications to the Claremont County PRC plan to be effective October 1st, 2019. Do I have a motion for item number nine as read? I'll make the motion. And I'll second that. Any further conversation or discussion? Roll call, Judy. Mrs. Corcoran. Yes. Mr. Painter. Yes. Item number 10. Item 10 is a recommendation of Timothy Dick, Director of the Department of Job and Family Services, with the concurrence of Thomas J. Igel, County Administrator, to execute a contract for services by and between the Claremont County Board of Commissioners for and on behalf of the Claremont County Department of Job and Family Services and Maria May, 1000 Gift Ridge Road, Manchester, Ohio, 45144, for the provision of in-home aid services for a specific child in the care and or custody of the Department of Job and Family Services in accordance with the scope of services attached here to and incorporated therein as Exhibit A at the rate of $15 per hour for the total not to exceed $35,000, effective October 29, 2019 through October 28, 2020, pursuant to and in compliance with the terms and conditions specified therein. You've heard the reading of item number 10. Do I have a motion for approval? I'll make the motion. And I'll second that motion. Any further conversation or discussion? Roll call, Judy. Corcoran. Yes. Mr. Painter. Yes. Item number 11. Item 11 is a recommendation of Thomas J. Igel, County Administrator, to authorize myself, Timothy Dick, Director of the Department of Job and Family Services, to execute an Ohio Department of Job and Family Services Title IV-E Child Placement Agreement and addendum thereto consisting of amendment numbers one through three, by and between the County of Claremont, Ohio, and Young Star Academy, located in Perrysville, Ohio, for the provision of residential treatment services for a spe specific child referred by the Department of Job and Family Services and or Claremont County Juvenile Court at a rate of $276 per day, effective for the period of September 24, 2019 through September 23, 2020, pursuant to and in compliance with the terms and conditions specified therein. We've heard the reading of item number 11. Do I have a motion, motion for approval? Make the motion. I'll second that motion. Any further conversation or discussion? Roll call, Judy. Corcoran. Yes. Painter. Yes. Item number 12. Item number 12 is a recommendation of Thomas J. Igel, County Administrator, to authorize myself, Timothy Dick, Director of Department of Job and Family Services, to execute an Ohio Department of Medicaid grant agreement by and between the Claremont County Department of Job and Family Services, acting in its role as an administrative agent for the Claremont County Family and Children First and the Ohio Department of Medicaid, located in Columbus, Ohio, for the provisions of technical and financial assistance to children, youth, and families with complex and multi-system needs in Claremont County, Ohio, with funding to be received on a case-by-case -case basis, with no local ma cash match required, therefore, effective upon signature of the Director of the Ohio Department of Medicaid through June 30th, 2021, pursuant to and in compliance with the terms and conditions specified therein. 
We've had the reading of item number 12. Do I have a motion for approval? Make the motion. I'll second that motion. Roll call, Judy. Corcoran? Yes. Dana? Yes. Item number 13. Item 13 is uh, my recommendation. Timothy Dick, Director of the Department of Job and Family Services, with the concurrence of Thomas J. Eigel, County Administrator, to execute an agreement for professional services by and between the Claremont County Board of Commissioners for and on behalf of the Claremont County Department of Job and Family Services, Children's Prote Protective Services Division, and the Central Clinic Behavioral Health, located in Cincinnati, Ohio, for the provision of trauma-informed therapeutic visits, visitation, and treatment services for children and family involved with Claremont County Children's Protective Services in the total amount of $74,777, effective November 1st, 2019, through October 31st, 2020, pursuant to and in compliance with the terms and conditions specified therein. Per the reading of item number 13, do I have a motion for approval? Make the motion. I'll second that motion. Any further conversation or discussion? Roll call, Judy. Corcoran? Yes. Painter? Yes. Item number 14. Item 14 is uh, my recommendation, Timothy Dick, Director of the Department of Job and Family Services, with the concurrence of Thomas J. Eigel, County Administrator, to execute a 4D service contract by and between the Department of Job and Family Services, Child Support Enforcement Division, and Mary K. Armacost, Attorney, located in Goshen, Ohio, for the purchase of legal services relative to child support enforcement, which may include but are not necessarily limited to reviewing, preparing, and presenting cases for court hearings, at the rate of $100 per unit hour for a total amount not to exceed 450 units or hours based on the actual time worked for a total contract amount not to exceed $45,000 effective for the period of November 23, 2019 through November 22, 2020 pursuant to and in compliance with the terms and conditions specified therein. You've heard the reading of item number 14. Do I have a motion for approval? I'll make the motion. I'll second that motion. Any further conversation or discussion? <clears throat> Judy, before I ask for a roll call on this, just a, a moment of discussion. This is a particular motion for um, legal services from obviously a licensed attorney. Is this something that we need a previous agreement before we employ an attorney? No, and it's a continuation of a current contract we do have. I just want to make sure. Thank you. And we have two of them on today, correct? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. You have another one also? Following, right. yes. Right. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Any other conversation or discussion? No. Roll call, Judy. Corcoran? Yes. Amy? Yes. Item number 15. Item number 15 is the recommendation of uh, myself, Timothy Dick, Director of Department of Job and Family Services, with the concurrence of Thomas J. Eigel, County Administrator, to execute a 4D service contract by and between the Department of Job and Family Services, Child Support Enforcement Division, and Richard D. Field III, located in Cincinnati, Ohio, for the purpose of legal services relative to child support enforcement, which may include but are not necessarily limited to reviewing, preparing, and presenting cases for court hearings at the rate of $100 per unit hour for a total amount not to exceed 450 unit or hours based on the actual time worked for a total contract amount not to exceed $45,000 effective for the period of December 1st, 2019 through November 30th, 2020 pursuant to and in compliance with the terms and conditions specified therein. Heard the reading of item number 15. Do I have a motion for approval? I'll make the motion. I'll second that motion. Any further conversation or discussion? Roll call, Judy. Mrs. Corker? Yes. Painter? Yes. Thank, thank you. you. <clears throat> Mr. Dick, thank you very much. <clears throat> There's a water fountain <laughs> right outside the door. I think we need, he needs to read all 32, though. That's not fair. <clears throat> item number 16. Good morning. I'm Lyle Bloom, director with the Claremont County Water Resource Department. And item 16 is a recommendation to accept the following grant of water easement with right of reentry for repair and replacement that will be granted that will be granted and conveyed to Claremont County for utility purposes of constructing, operating, maintaining, repairing, replacing, and removing or reinstalling water utility lines, pumping equipment, and all incidental fixtures required for the transportation of water in, on, under, and across the property of the grantors. And this is relative to the Glendale and Glen Willow water main replacement project located in Union Township under authorized execution of the plat of easement. 
and further to authorize the county auditor to remit payment to the grantors in the amount as outlined below and as indicated on the settlement sheet as compensation for the permanent easement and right of way and to remit payment to in the amount of eighty dollars payable to Jeannie M. Zermely, the Claremont County Treasurer, for the reporting fees. And the grantors are Timothy <coughs> and Adonica Coyle for property at forty four fifty nine Glendale Drive in Batavia. Prepared to reading item number sixteen. Do I have a motion for approval? I'll make the motion. I'll second that motion. Any further conversation <laughs> or discussion? Roll call, Judy. Yes. Yes. Item number 17. Item number 17 is a recommendation to award the bid uh, for project number 6401-60172 relative to the Branch Hill Guinea Road water main replacement. This is from Bridal Path to Merle Lane and Jerilest to Glen Echo, uh, located in Miami Township, pursuant to the <coughs> applications to Smith Corp Incorporated out of Cincinnati, Ohio. For their lowest and best bid received on September 19th, 2019, for a total amount not to exceed $1,832,910.15, execute the contract relative thereto pursuant to and in compliance with the terms and conditions set forth therein and the award of bid therefore and contingent upon the release of the required purchase order. Uh, this bid was uh, about 105% of the engineer's estimate, so it was below the 110% requirement. And the project involves replacing um, or installing about 8,624 feet of new 16-inch water main to replace existing an existing 10-inch and 12-inch water main on Branch Hill Guinea. We've had the reading of item number 17 for water main replacement. Do I have a motion for approval? Make the motion. I'll second that motion. Any further conversation or discussion? No. Roll call, Judy. Clerkin? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Lyle. Thank you. Item number 18. morning, Craig Reisner, Claremont County Engineer's Office. Item number 18 is recommendation of Jeremy Evans, County Engineer, with concurrence of Thomas Igle, County Administrator, to execute record plat number 6293181 and 6293182, three plats of lots in the following subdivision located in Miami Township. This is Twin Fox Acres subdivision. Uh, replat of lot number 26A, we're going to create new lot numbers 26C and 26B, and replat of lot 26C and 28, and create new lot number 28A. Heard the reading of item number 18. Do I have a motion for approval? Make the motion. I'll second that motion. Any further conversation? Roll call, Judy. Corcoran. Yes. Yes. Item number 19. Item 19 is a recommendation of Jeremy Evans, County Engineer, with the concurrence of Thomas Igle, County Administrator, to execute record plat numbers 6293183 and 6293184 for the following subdivision located in Pierce Township to further execute performance and maintenance bond as well as a performance bond for sidewalks, a surety for the same relative to the construction of the below listed streets. Uh, two sections of, of Prestwick Place subdivision here, uh, section 2 block C and section 3 block B. Uh, 2C is performance bond of $27,000, maintenance bond of $10,000, and the performance bond for sidewalks is $30,400. Uh, Prestwick Place 3B, the performance bond is $27,000. Maintenance bond is ten. dollars <coughs> Performance bond for sidewalks is $30,400. So we have one bond that is covering both of these sections. Do I have approval for item number 19 as read? I'll make the motion. I'll second that motion. Any further conversation or discussion? Roll call, Judy. Corcoran? Yes. Mr. Painter? Yes. Item number 20. Thank you. Item 20 is a recommendation to ratify the appointment of J.M. Toll. I'm told it's like Toll House Cookie, oh, correct? Right. Right. Okay. <laughs> As a deputy dog warden for the county, pursuant to and in compliance with Section 955.12 of the High Revised Code, and in concert with the contract with Claremont Animal Care Humane Society for the statutory requirements of Chapter 955 of the High Revised Code, and this was previously ratified by the board on 11 29 2017 and this will be effective or was effective 11 6 2019. Turn it over to the podium. Introduce uh, J.M. Toll here. He's been uh, with Animal Control since you know 1993. Focus was wildlife and then uh, all the way up until 2014 he was actually appointed by the mayor of Manchester. Served that until 2018 and is now coming back to uh, domestic animal care uh, versus wildlife. 
Thank you, sir, for your service. <clears throat> Tom, has he been duly sworn in to serve in that office? Okay. You have heard the recommendation of Thomas Eigel to resolve to ratify the appointment of Deputy Dog Warden of Claremont County. Do I have a motion for approval? I make the motion. I'll second that motion. Roll call, Judy. Corcoran? Yes. Mr. Painter? <coughs> yes. Mr. Toll, thanks for your service. You bet. Item number 21. Item 21 is a recommendation to authorize David L. Painter, President of the Board, to execute a satisfaction of mortgage, certifying that the terms of the mortgage and the promissory note they secured have been satisfied, and authorizing the recorder to release the said mortgage of record as it relates to the Claremont County Community Housing Improvement Program, and the property is located at 326A Brown Street in Bethel. At the reading of item number 21, do I have a motion for approval? Make the motion. Any further conversation or discussion? Roll call, Judy. Corcoran? Yes. Mr. Painter? Yes. Item number 22. Item 22 is a recommendation to authorize David L. Painter, President of the Board, to execute a letter of intent to renew the management agreement with First Transit to act as an independent contractor to manage the operations of the public transit system in Claremont County for the period of January 20th, 2020 through January 19th, 2021, pursuant to and in compliance with Section 4 of the Management Agreement ratified by the Board on January 17th, 2018. And this represents the second and final of two additional one-year renewal options. For the reading of item number 22, do I have a motion for approval? I make the motion. I'll second that motion. Any further conversation? Roll call, Judy. Corcoran? Yes. Mr. Painter? Yes. Item number 23. Hi, Mary. Good morning. Good morning. Mary Raines from the Office of Management and Budget. Item 23 is a recommendation to increase the 2019 annual appropriations for the Water Construction Fund in the amount of $1,855,146 in order to proceed with some projects this year. You've heard the reading of item number 23 for an increase to the Water Construction Funds. Do I have a motion for approval? I make the motion. Second. Any further conversation or discussion? Roll call, Judy. Corcoran? Yes. Mr. Painter? Yes. And that concludes the regular scheduled and prepared agenda. Do we have some add-ons, Mr. Igel? Okay. Yes, we do. We have uh, three add-ons for consideration. One is in the uh, Community and Economic Development Department, and it's a contract for professional services. The second is in the Facilities Management Department, and it is an award of bid and execution of contract. And third is in the Department of Job and Family Services, and this is also a contract for services. Okay. <clears throat> You've heard the description of the three uh, possible add-ons. Do I have a motion to add them to the agenda? I'll make the motion. And I'll second that. Roll call, Judy. Corcoran. Yes. Dana. Yes. We've added the three on, and... Tom, if you'll do the honors, the first, well, Sherry. Sherry. Good morning, Sherry Smart Community and Economic Development. I have a recommendation of Andy Kutka, Director, Department of Community and Economic Development, with concurrence of Thomas J. Eigel, County Administrator, to execute a contract for professional services by and between the Board of County Commissioners of Claremont County and Choice One Engineering Corporation, located at 440 East Hawaiishire Road, I'm assuming, Sydney, Ohio, for engineering design, inspection, and administration services for project number 2017-02 relative to the village of Bethel South Union Street Bridge replacement project in concert with the Claremont County Community Development Block Grant Program for fiscal year 2017 in accordance with the scope of services designated in Exhibit A, attached thereto and made a part thereof in the amount not to exceed $27,800, pursuant to and in compliance with the terms and conditions set forth and contingent upon the issuance and receipt of the required purchase order. Board, you've heard the reading of the uh, uh, request for a contract for professional services. Do I have a motion for approval? Make the motion. I'll provide a second. Any further conversation or discussion? Roll call, Judy. Corcoran. Yes. Mr. Painter. Yes. Thanks, Sherry. Sherry, thank you for the ribbons today. You're welcome. Thank you. 
<clears throat> and that might that might warrant it just stopping for a second just to say that you know as you can see within the audience here some people are adorning that purple ribbon and that purple ribbon is for pancreatic cancer awareness so um, that's touched some of the people here and our staff and it's very close and dear to our hearts so thanks Sherry for making sure we had this <clears throat> we'll move to the next one Wade good morning thank you Mor morning Second add on is a recommendation of myself, Wade Grabowski, Director of the Facilities Management Department, with a concurrence, Mr. Thomas J. Eigel, County Administrator, to award the bid for the Asphalt Repairs Parking Lot Resurfacing Project 2019, pursuant to the specifications, therefore, to Hauk Asphalt Maintenance from Bethel, Ohio, for the lowest and best base bid received on 10-17-2019 in the amount of $246,293, and to execute the contract relative thereto with said services to commence upon the issuance of a written notice to proceed from the Claremont County Facilities Management Department and to be completed within 365 days thereafter pursuant to and in compliance with the terms and conditions specified therein and the award of bid. This will also be uh, contingent upon the release of the required purchase order uh, co in concert with requisition number 5662 dated 10 2019 relative thereto. You've heard the reading of the add-on for asphalt repairs and parking lot resurfacing projects for 2019. Do I have a motion for approval? I'll make the motion. I'll second that motion. Any further conversation or discussion? Wait, before I, I move off of this one, would you just talk about thing? what all is going to be sure. this is a, asphalted and repaired? This is a countywide project uh, handling everything from a complete overlay to replacement. Um, we're doing the sheriff, the jail, uh, some portions of the municipal court, service filiger, the family support center complex. Um, we're also doing a major project at the 911 building. So we decided to take and bid the entire county projects together. Um, I will say that this uh, project was well under the engineer's estimate, um, and we're very pleased with the, uh, with the amount of the bid. And the reason I had you expound on that is because, you know, to make people aware just how much asphalt services that our facilities department here at the Board of County Commissioners has to manage. Absolutely. And, and you have to do that. You have to manage your, your assets because otherwise it's going to cost you 10, 15, 20 times that amount if you don't keep them up on a regular <coughs> basis. So, as cold as it is today, um, you might think, well, the asphalt plants uh, probably will close. They are not closed. Um, <laughs> hopefully we're going to have a nice two and a half, three week warm up. Um, and we'd like to get started with the, the, key, uh, the key areas quickly. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Roll call, Judy. Corcoran? Yes. Mr. Painter? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Department of Job and Family Services. The third add-on is a recommendation of, my, of myself, Timothy Dick, Director of the Department of Job and Family Services, with the, the concurrence of Thomas J. Eigel, County Administrator, to execute a contract for services by and between the Claremont County Board of Commissioners for and on behalf of the Claremont County Department of Job and Family Services and Chase Beasley, located in Peebles, Ohio, for the provisions of in-home aid services for a specific child in the care and or custody of the Department of Job and Family Services in accordance with the scope of services attached here to and incorporated herein as Exhibit A at the rate of $15 per hour for a total amount not to exceed $35,000, effective October 29, 2019 through October 28, 2020, pursuant to and in compliance with the terms and conditions specified therein. We've had the reading of the add-on for uh, contract services by and between the Board of Commissioners and Chase Beasley. Do I have a motion for approval? I'll make the motion. I'll second that motion. Any further conversation or discussion? Roll call, Judy. Ms. Corcoran? Yes. Mr. Painter? Yes. Tom, any further add-ons? Not this time. All right. Then I would move to item number G of the agenda. I'm requesting an executive session pursuant to section 121.22 G3 of the Ohio Revised Code to confer with the prosecuting attorney regarding pending or imminent litigation. Do I have a motion to go into executive session? I'll make the motion. And I'll second that motion. Roll call, Judy. Mrs. Corcoran? Yes. Mr. Painter? Yes. We will move into executive session. We will return and we will conduct further business. Thank you for coming. We are back from executive session and we will continue on with our regularly scheduled meeting November the 13th, 2019. Tom, are there any, one more time, are there any additions to the agenda? 
One addition for your consideration is a um, joint petition for outside legal counsel. You've heard the request for uh, an addition to the agenda. Do I have a motion to amend the agenda and add this particular item? I'll make the motion. I'll second that. Roll call, Judy. Corcoran? Yes. <clears throat> Painter? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Ramos, would you do us the honors of describing the add-on? I will. Uh, as you recall, as Mr. Eigel indicated, the board had signed a joint application with Mr. Ferris to appoint outside legal counsel in a particular matter. So it's the recommendation of Thomas J. Eigel, County Administrator for the Board of County Commissioners, to employ outside legal counsel pursuant to and in compliance with revised code section 305.14 and a joint application for outside counsel with D. Vincent Ferris, Claremont County Prosecutor, which was signed by David L. Painter, President of the Board of County Commissioners on November 6, 2019, filed with the Clerk of the Court of Common Pleas on November 7, 2019 and, and designated by case number 2019 miscellaneous 00039 NRA counsel for Claremont County prosecuting attorney and granted through an entry issued by the Honorable Anthony W. Brock filed in case number 2019 miscellaneous 00039 on November 7, 2019 as outlined as follows George D. Johnson Montgomery Johnson LLP 600 Vine Street Suite 2650, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45202, to represent an assistant prosecuting attorney in a matter involving the Ohio Supreme Court related to actions taken in the assistant prosecuting attorney's official capacity. Compensation will be at the rate of $200 per hour, with a total amount not to exceed $10,000. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Ramos. You've heard the reading of the add-on to employ outside counsel for the prosecutor's office. Do I have a motion for approval? I'll make the motion. I'll second that motion. Any further conversation or discussion? <coughs> Roll call, Judy. Corcoran? Yes. Mr. Painter? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Ramos. Thank you. We'll continue on with the agenda. Item number H, county staff elected official discussions. Do we have any county staff which, with us here this morning or elected officials that would like to address the board? Seeing none, I'll move on to item number I for member comments. <clears throat> Mr. Corcoran, any comments from the board today? Not from me. Uh, one of the comments I'd make is thanks for coming this morning and talking about uh, uh, canine services and animal welfare here in Claremont County, not just canines, but all animals. We uh, appreciate you coming and we, we appreciate, you know, hearing your opinions and, and uh, your thoughts on that. Uh, I would tell you that later on today there is a negotiation meeting with, you know, the CARE uh, Humane Society for us to try and negotiate the last year of their three-year contract. You know, one of the things I did want to point out is that this is a three-year contract. You know, it was let with the first year and then it has two one-year options. This is discussions for the last year option. And so we have issued a letter of intent for them to continue to provide this service. And uh, now we're just talking about the cost. And that's all part of business portions of, you know, contracts and subcontract negotiations. So, again, thanks for coming to the board this morning. We appreciate that. Okay. Anything else? Then I would ask for a motion to adjourn this meeting. I would just like to oh. bring to the board's attention, which you are already aware, but it is on the schedule, um, that our meeting in December, our very first meeting, will be on Tuesday, December 3rd at 3 o'clock p.m. in our offices prior to the 6 p.m. scheduled public hearing at Claremont Northeastern High School in and as it relates to the village of Newtonsville, Wayne Township improvements to the water or to the sewer system thanks judy mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that will show on the regular it, it does show already mm -hmm. okay all right i'd ask for a motion to to adjourn the meeting i'll make the motion and i'll second that roll call judy corcoran yes mr painter yes <clears throat> that adjourns our meeting for today on November the 13th, 2019, thanks so much for your attendance and, and thanks for watching if you're, if you're seeing this for the first time on the cable channel. Um, have a great day. Thank you.
Thank you.